is it not quite prevalent in the art world? And this is probably quite controversial. That the counterfeiting level has damaged the original. Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, let's talk about why rich ladies and men buy fakes. Let's have a chat about why people who are very wealthy, women, men, whomever, buy fakes or buy counterfeit bags whenever they probably have the opportunity and the money to buy the original quality, authentic bag with probably ease. It's probably not gonna hurt their pocket that much. It's probably not something they're gonna to have to save for or plan for. The money's there, that's what we're talking about. People who are wealthy and can afford these bags. And when I first saw these videos on the internet talking about why wealthy people bought fakes or counterfeits, I was probably very naive about it. And I thought, why would they? Of course they wouldn't. Why would they buy fakes or counterfeits? Because they have the money. So obviously people only buy fakes or counterfeits because they can't afford the original and they want the original. So why would wealthy people buy the fake option? And that I think was a very narrow, naive, not thought through, not researched view of mine. That was my automatic reaction, but I now realize there's a little bit more to it than that. And it was a very simplistic way of looking at it. And what really brought this to my mind was I put out a video not that long ago on the Chanel price increases, and I will link that video above. And it was the comments on that video that made me think about this more and that led to this video. And the comments on that video were a mixture of saying, well, there's going to be lots more fakes now. Chanel have just flooded the market with counterfeits. Chanel have just made lots more fakes become available. There were those comments. Then there were comments about security. Then there were comments about feeling comfortable using your bags. And then there were comments about choosing to spend your money whenever Chanel were putting these prices up and the choice that you're making. And it just clicked. It just came into my mind about why so many people are buying fakes even when they're very, very wealthy. And the first point is coming from the comments. When Chanel, for example, push these prices up so high, the market for counterfeits or fakes explodes. And the people who are making these counterfeits and their fakes effectively perfect their art. You can now get counterfeit bags, I think they're triple A class counterfeit, that are so good, that are so close to the real thing. If I pick up my black classic flap, which I have set out for this reason, because I've watched a few videos comparing triple A counterfeit Chanel bags with the original classic flap. And oh my goodness, to the untrained eye, I'm not a trained eye, to the untrained eye, it was next to impossible to tell the difference. Only that some of the videos were pointing out the very minute differences. Some of them you couldn't even see. Some of them, there were no differences. If you didn't have technology, if you didn't have a way to try and authenticate these bags, which didn't just rely on the human eye and experience, it was next to impossible to differentiate the original, very expensive version from the counterfeit version. And one of the reasons that wealthy people are buying fakes is that these, I'm not just wealthy people, anybody, these counterfeits, these options to buy fake bags are now so good. They have got them so, so exact to what the original is that there has to be a thinking in some people, why would I pay that? Especially with the price increases. This bag is now around about 9,000 pounds. Wow, over $10,000. There has to be a, is it worth it? It's a bag that holds not very much and is an awkward chain length and can be hard to get in the boutique. Some of them don't even want to take my money. So why would I do that and spend that money on it whenever I can get a version of that bag that looks identical? Nobody's gonna know the difference for a much, much, much lesser price and I'm just not going to voice the fact that it's not authentic and that it's counterfeit. And that has to be one of the first reasons why wealthy people, anybody, is buying counterfeits because there are options of them that are now so good that you can't tell the difference. Number two, there has to be a bit of a pushback that's coming from these continued aggressive 
price increases. Now, I don't know if this would impact wealthy people just as much, but if you are somebody who looks after your money, and I'm sure a lot of wealthy people look after their money as well. Yes, just people that have so much money they can buy whatever. But if you do look after your money and you're looking at the price of these things and the continued price increases and the significant price increases, and you know that there's an option to buy counterfeits, and you know there's an option to fill your wardrobe of colours and qualities that people actually won't know the difference on, and you're kind of getting a bit annoyed at Chanel, for example, who keep having these price increases, does it not make you think about counterfeit if you're not against buying them? Number three, and I thought this was very interesting, and this came from the comments, and it's security. And a lot of wealthy people will be very conscious of their security, not even just wealthy people, but I suppose the reason why we talk about why wealthy people would buy counterfeits is it seems so counterintuitive to them being readily able to afford to buy these bags at their level. So they, when they buy counterfeits, it's almost a little bit more surprising. But security is something that everybody has to be aware of. And we all know that in certain countries, if you are in a wealthy area, in a wealthy home, in an area where there are gated homes, wealthy homes, whatever, that they can be targeted for burglaries, robberies and thieves quite a lot. And one of the examples we would see of this in the UK quite a lot is that footballers can get targeted by burglaries whenever the people know that they're not going to be there if they're playing a match or whatever and you will quite often and quite sad see a lot of them having their homes invaded while they're playing and that has to be something that's on the mind of very wealthy people that if they are buying these bags and they're buying them as originals and they know that they are vulnerable or there is the option that they're going to be targeted for these bags to be stolen and everything else that they own. And if we think back not that long ago to when Tamara was targeted and had all of her bags burgled from her, and I genuinely believe hers were authentic, but if you know that you're going to lose that value of assets, because if you're looking at it in that mind frame, these are assets. And if you know that if somebody comes and burgles your home, and you're going to lose hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of assets, in original bags and there are options of counterfeits which look exactly the same. Is that not something that you might just consider as a security measure or a counter theft measure that if you were to lose all of these, if they all were to be stolen or taken, that you're losing counterfeits and you're not losing the value of what it is that you actually would have bought if it was an original. Is it not quite prevalent in the art world whenever you will see on display in people's homes, very, very wealthy people, a counterfeit of a very famous piece of art and the original of that famous piece of art is held in a very secure, air temperature controlled, locked facility. So as you get to see the beauty of what it is that you are loving and looking at, but it's not the original version and the original version is safe. It's safe from being damaged. It's safe from being stolen. It's safe from being vandalized. And is there not some thinking with the very wealthy when they consider that for their art that they may consider the same for their bags as a security measure, as a counter theft measure. But if you have a lot of staff coming in and out of your house, maybe contracted staff, maybe people doing events for you, and you have all of these things on display, is that not something you might think about, about not displaying the original? If you're going out and you know that you're going out and drawing attention to yourself and that people know where you live, would that not be something you might be thinking about? Because the value of all of those were to be taken would be huge. Following on from that, insurance. The cost to insure luxury designer bags is very, very high. But as well as that, many of us will have a belief or will have an understanding that insurance companies quite often will do whatever they can to get out of paying you the value of what it is that you have lost. And if you have the original of these bags sitting around your home, and if we're talking about someone who's very wealthy, might have hundreds of these bags sitting around their home, there would be a concern that if they were to be stolen, that the insurance, firstly the cost of obtaining the insurance, but that the insurance may not cover 
the cost of what these bags are. They may not give you back close to what you've spent on these bags. And if you're going to be buying them to the point we have hundreds of them, that is something that I can see a wealthy person considering. Another factor could be keeping up. And I'm not saying that a wealthy person couldn't afford to keep up, of course they could, but if they're savvy with their money, but yet they still want to be buying every new bag, every new color, every new design, and they're only going to be using it for a very short period of time because they're only going to be using it while it's having its moment. And then they're going to move on to the next one and they're going to move on to the next one. Is there not a consideration there of maybe buying the counterfeit version? Because if you're very wealthy, you're probably not going to be into buying and selling and things like that. So do they just buy the counterfeit version of the newest bag then set it aside, get the next one, set it aside, get the next one, set it aside, get the next one. So is there always seen with the newest bag, the newest version of the bag, but they're not actually putting that amount of money into handbags every time there's a new release or a new season. And we know there's so many new seasons now that they're having those, but they're not authentic. There are also a couple of people on Instagram that there is discussion about that in their photographs, the bags aren't authentic. And there are people that would be influencing, I suppose, and their bags to go with outfits or their bag. And I'm not talking about dupes, I'm talking about counterfeits of the bag, their bags to go with outfits, their bags to be used for photo shoots, but they're not actually securing the authentic version of the bag but they have them for the photo shoot, but I know that certainly I wouldn't know the difference. I was sent a couple of these showing and discussing bags that weren't authentic in a bag in a group that I'm in, and those people are obviously a lot more knowledgeable than me. I wouldn't have known it was authentic. It wasn't authentic, sorry. And it's no doubt because there's this turnaround of photographs and outfits and bags to go with outfits blew my mind a little bit. Another consideration might be as well that you're investing your money on actual investments. I have a video talking about this. I don't believe handbags are investments. If you're wealthy and you've made your wealth and you've invested your money, you may just have more sense than the likes of me who wastes a lot of mine on luxury handbags and spends a lot on handbags. And you may be more focused on investing your money on actual investments and making your money work for you, and making your money grow. And you can still have the look of a lot of these bags, but you can buy a counterfeit version and buy a version that isn't authentic. Now, this is something when I started to think about this, and it only really came to my mind when those comments were being put on that Chanel price increase video about how this was gonna have an increase in counterfeits and more people would be buying counterfeits and there would be wardrobes full of counterfeits that it kind of clicked because for me, it kind of goes against the grain. And I kind of naively thought nobody would buy a counterfeit when they can afford a real one. And I was thinking of myself because I have never knowingly bought a counterfeit. For me, part of what I enjoy is that I enjoy going to the store or I enjoy getting a piece of that brand. I enjoy the hype of it. I enjoy my feeling of excitement. I love color. I enjoy finding something different, something bright, etc., etc. But that may not be the same for everyone. And it may be that there is a little bit of this, and this is probably quite controversial, but I'm just putting it out there. I don't come from money. So working and earning money to achieve these bags was a thing. Achieving these bags was an achievement. It was something to be worked towards. It was something that was not easy. It was a goal that I achieved. But if you're very wealthy or if you've always been wealthy and there's no challenge to any of these, there's no goal, there's no achievement, because they're not something to be worked towards or reached. It's not something that you've finally been able to buy a never fill like I did and you thought you were amazing like I did. If that's never been a thing for you, if this is something that's easily accessible, that it's not something you've reached and you feel fabulous about reaching, does it matter to you the same if you're buying an authentic version or a counterfeit version because you could have bought it all along. It's not such a moment to arrive at. It's not such a thing to achieve. So why spend your money on achieving it? Because there's not gonna be that feeling of it for you. 
when you can just buy the counterfeit version that looks practically exactly the same. I think whether or not you're someone who buys counterfeits is a very personal thing for me. I don't, I never have knowingly. I have videos on this channel where I did have a counterfeit Gucci bag and a counterfeit Louis Vuitton passport. Both of them meant to have been original when they were sold and I've talked about that. Those videos I will link above. For me there's more to it than just the cost or the money. There is that sense of achievement of reaching that bag and obtaining that bag and I personally choose not to carry counterfeits. For me there's also the other side of it though in that it is hard enough to regularise and monitor and enforce safe working conditions in companies that are legitimate. There are horror stories about what goes on behind the making of counterfeits and about how people are treated and about who makes them and about what they get paid and about their working conditions. And if you look into counterfeits a bit more, you will also come across discussions about counterfeits being linked to organised crime or crime. And that's a personal decision and it's a decision that I have taken that I don't buy counterfeits. I don't judge anybody that does. It's something that I have decided for me personally. I do think though, and I can understand that another reason why people may consider buying counterfeits is that there are certain bags that have been so heavily counterfeited. And I might talk about this separately in a video, but there are certain bags and prints and an example would be Louis Vuitton monogram, Gucci canvas, now the Chanel bags that are so heavily counterfeited that the counterfeiting level has damaged the original. And people don't want to buy the original now because there's so many counterfeits of it. And people may think, why would I buy an original monogram bag or an original Gucci bag when there's so many counterfeits? Because mine's gonna look like a counterfeit. There's so many of them about. It's gonna look like I'm carrying a fake. So why am I buying the original when I could just buy the fake? And I do think there are certain bags that have been damaged by the level of counterfeiting and it has impacted their reputation and it's impacted the bag. I think that definitely is a thing. I know certainly when I bought my first Neverfull in Rome and I was having my moment carrying my chocolate brown shopping bag like I was the best thing, there was a lot of Neverfulls being sold counterfeited around Rome and my husband, we were outside the Pantheon and my husband was asking me, why did you just spend that amount of money on that when you could just buy one over there for a fraction of the price? Because I, I wanted the original and I wanted to have, but there were so many of them about and there are still so many counterfeit Louis Vuitton monograms about that you can see why that's something that people would consider. I hope this video has been interesting. It's been a little bit of food for thought and my views on why some wealthy people who can afford to buy originals might be, might be buying the counterfeits when it's something that I struggled to understand at the start. What's your views on this? What do you think about it? Do you think wealthy people are buying counterfeits? Do you think it's not a thing? Do you understand why? Do you think of any other reasons why they may do that? If you do have any input, please come into the comment box and let us know. If you have enjoyed this in any way, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for being here. Please consider subscribing. Please take care and I will see you again in the next one.